there anymore. That's <laughs> much. <laughs> Is that better? Hey. Shalom. How are you guys? Yeah. Are we coming through all right? Yeah, we're coming through great. Mm. All right. Now, I'm, right. I'm at the salon today, so uh, we'll have to do a, a show, say, next week or maybe the week after, and I'll be at home, and Amy can, uh, <laughs> can come in and say hello too. Okay, that sounds good. Um, <laughs> hold on. Let me see here. Yeah. It's very jumpy. Does that do anything? It's very jumpy, isn't it? Did that, did that do anything for you? Uh, was that a toilet? <laughs> no, that was a bunch of balloons. <laughs> you didn't see an animation on your side? No, I didn't, sorry. I downloaded it. It should give you something that tells you an address where you can do this. It's called Messenger Plus for Skype. Messenger Plus for Skype, yeah. What does yeah. it do? Oh, it just lets you record and do uh, like little animations and things. It's yeah, cool. There's there's a few different things it does. I don't know if it does the editing or whatnot. I think it allows me to put. Well, I got a new webcam. It allows me to put things on my face. Yeah. Right, let me see if I can find something for you here. I don't know. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Anyways. So how, uh, Amy's not around the salon today. I guess she's with the kids at home. With the kids today, yeah. Mm. That's cool. Mm. So, you got big business? No, today, uh, on the second day of the week, everybody's, uh, all the salons in town are closed, and we're normally the only one open, which you'd think we'd be chock-a-block, but uh, I don't think anybody knows the salons are open, so... And I don't have any apprentices here today, so I get to catch up on my uh, on my work, on my video work. Or well, today, yeah. today I'm packaging CDs. See this? Oh yeah. It? What is it? It's a double CD. Oh. I'm just. Well, uh, what is that? Music. Music. Yeah, I'm getting them shipped off to uh, to Louisville. Oh. To introduce this person on this one, this is my youngest daughter, Allison Grace. Hello. Say hello to everybody. How are you? I'm good. Very much. <laughs> um, it's my bedtime. It what is. time is it there? It's, uh, it's time. 10 minutes past midday. Tina's here as well. Hey. Good evening. How are you? Good. Very good. Very good. Did you make the bed this week? I oh, didn't have to do that for me. <laughs> oh, was it not made before? <laughs> Just teasing you. It's fine. Yeah, no, today was the, the day of cleaning our room. So. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, we straightened up. The yeah, cat. we don't usually talk to you on the first day, I guess. The cats were on it last week. Yeah, I noticed on one of the videos that I had sugar over here. That That's our cat sugar. He is very much a pet. Yeah. There are some animals that are not really designed to be pets. Yeah. He is he's designed to be a pet. <laughs> he's, uh, yeah. he's really yeah. good at it. Um, he, uh, he's got a brother, too, a litter mate yeah. that runs around here named Pepper. Mm. He's a solid black kitty cat, and he um, he's not a pet. No? No, he's not really, not really cut out for it. He he likes to scratch things up. You know, he'll run away from you when you try to pet him. He's always wanting to be outside. He's, uh, we've got him fixed and everything, and we take care of him, but he just, he's never really taken a shine to being cared for. Yeah. But, but Shug's, on the other hand, he'll walk out into a room full of people, look at all of them, and then just plop down, roll straight onto his back, and Love me, you know. <laughs> he will roll completely over, and he's got this fluffy belly. He's really cute. I don't know where he went. I I give you a little bit better look than just a face off here in the background. <laughs> you guys have we uh we have a fish. 
<laughs> that qualifies. And we have a rabbit. Water or fresh water? Uh, fresh and water. Yeah. Fresh water. Yeah. We used to have a salt water tank when we lived in Lubbock, Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, haven't had one for a while. I really like that. It was yeah. beautiful. I learned a lot about the. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about um, aquatics and, and marine. Probably not a ton about marine biology, but at least something. <laughs> yeah. I understand why now um, worldwide genocide on the part of, uh, you know, the Illuminati or whatever would not be a very good idea. <laughs> you put that much dead flesh into one place and it'll kill what's left, you know. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. like having a dead fish in your tank. It's mm. it's not good. Yeah. I don't know if they're really thinking it through or, or what. Maybe they're just thinking they'll live in their bunkers for a while. Mm. <laughs> I can tell you right now, nothing's going to happen without your USA so, though. So whatever they're dreaming about, I guess mm. they're just going to have to put their plans on hold because they don't actually run the world the way they think they do. Yeah. Yeah. So um, last time, or the time before, you were saying that there are uh, 613, was it, commands that we're supposed to keep, and then a, and then a lot of them have to do with um, the running of the temple, yeah. which is not relevant now. So where would a well, person a where would a person uh, go, I know the Torah, but where would a person find, is there a list specific of what those commandments are somewhere, like for somebody who's just sure. come along, where, where would they find all those commandments? Because we just go, Ten Commandments, do the Ten Commandments. But things like zitzitz and kosher food and things like that, they're not in the Ten Commandments. So... Uh, if somebody didn't have hours and hours to go through, you know, 20 books of scripture to find where those 613 are and then decide whether they were temple related or not, where would, where would somebody find? A list of them? Man, you can Google just about anything these days. It was, it strikes me, it's just amazing how much information we have uh, available to us. You know, it used to be if I wanted to learn about something, I had to go and find it in a book. You know, I had to go to the library or something, but you can just type whatever you want to know into the Google search and it'll come right up for you. I'm sure there's a list compiled of them. I mean, obviously, we would uh, we'd encourage people to go through those five books, uh, you know, just simply because that gives uh, the spirit the opportunity to be the one teaching, you know, and I mean, it gives direct access to you as instruction. So if they'll read through it, however long it takes. There's a lot of people, for instance, who are going to uh, services on Shabbat. And um, not that I, I mean, as long as it's not strenuous, I mean, you know, it, it needs to be restful. First and foremost, we're commanded to rest. Uh, as for what out of your place means, there's different ways that people look at that. Some people think out of your camp. You know, not necessarily out of your home, but out of your camp. It says you don't go out of your place. And there's different ways to look at that. I like something that Lou says very much with regards to all of this, and that is that um, a person really approaches the Scripture with a dark eye whenever they're looking for excuses to disobey. Well, how do I disobey this? How do I get away with that? Um, and the way that he puts it is to say that if we're going to make a mistake, it's best that we err on the side of righteousness. The truth is we're not going to be in violation for leaving our house. <laughs> but at any rate, as we're learning, as we're being taught by the Spirit to learn and to grow, you know, we, we're not necessarily going to realize perfection at, upon immersion. You know, it's a process. Um, it's something that we learn that the Spirit, He takes us into all truth, you know. Um, and, and there is certainly a precedent in Scripture where people were going to the temple, you know, the heckle, to, to learn uh, on the Sabbath. They were going to hear Moshe being taught. And it's not necessarily our older brother, the Yehudim, that were doing that. You know, they might talk about it all the time. They might deal with it a bunch. But... So, yeah. Something's coming up on the screen. A little, little. If there's a big delay, did you push something a little while ago? Little pictures are coming up. Yeah. <laughs> What's it's coming? Wild. Yeah. There's it a, was it like a little pig nose? Oh yeah. Can you see it now? 
No, I just came on and went off again. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't. I set it to run. I don't know if it was going to actually do it or not. Maybe our inter- I, maybe our connection's really bad. So because it is pretty jumpy today. So uh, okay. Maybe let that me, needs a stream. Let me turn it off. I'll make sure it's turned off so it doesn't happen again. <laughs> anyway. Uh, that guy puts pig noses on while he's talking about the commandments. He's a pig. <laughs> Here, look, I've got, a, I've got a crown, too. Maybe I can get it to come on. I don't know. Anyways, let me know if you see it. Mm. Um, anyway, I've got it set up. Maybe it'll take a little while for it to come to. Um, it won't be the one that Yahushua gives me. <laughs> yeah. uh, that... Uh, they they would uh, really be primarily goyim, you know, people who didn't know the Torah. I mean, the Yehudim were being taught the Torah from the time they were five years old, you know. Shaul uh, was uh, our beloved brother, Paul, was um, was vastly educated in the Torah as an up-and-coming Pharisee, you know. He was very well aware of everything, probably memorized vast portions of it, probably... Um, was able to recite, you know, from memory, vast portions of the, of the Torah. Um, but the Gentiles that were coming in, the ones that uh, Yahushua's people were reaching, you know, Yahushua's Talmudim were reaching, and these were regathered the lost sheep of Israel, you know, lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, and, I mean, to some degree, you can understand it based on, for instance, uh, the parable about um, the one, the the vineyard owner, you know, and the, his servants becoming jealous, and they they killed the son because they thought that that would gain them the inheritance. Hmm. You know, there was there was something to that parable. Not necessarily that they killed him uh, because he was afraid they might upset the status quo. You know, hmm. but that Yahushua was there and he was actually offering Israel's inheritance to the Gentile convert. You know, that they would become, did you see the crown? Yeah, it, just went, just, it comes and goes really quick. <laughs> I think I have to sit still for a really long time. Okay. And then my camera figures it out. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> I'm glad you got to see it. I'm going to turn it off now. Okay. Anyways, um, let's turn it off. Anyways, that that, that would happen I think to some degree, you know, oh, he's messing with our inheritance. You know, you mean anybody's going to be able to engraft into Israel and mm. become like native born? Mm. You know, uh, that that was a so they're coming in. They're learning the Torah on Shabbat. They may not have had another day off. Mm. You know, yeah, that was the only time where they could go and learn the Torah. And if and I'm saying this to anyone who's watching, if you haven't read it, if you have not gone through it, I recommend you find a time to do that, even if it's on Shabbat, uh, that you would, you know, be somewhere and study it and learn it and read those five books, not in order to say that you shouldn't go on, you know, it shouldn't continue to read through the scriptures as you have them, but read those five books because those instructions are there. And it'll be very obvious whether or not this is something that can happen because it'll be saying, well, you need to take this per- particular sacrifice over to the temple. Yeah. Or am I going to take it? Yeah. You know, uh, and that when I said that essentially it's not something that we can accomplish, that doesn't mean that there wasn't a spirit behind it. You know, understanding why this person was taking that sacrifice is still there and understanding that we still do make sacrifices in our hearts, that, that we give up things. I mean, we really have taken everything that we have and we have given it to him. Hmm. We understand that it comes from him, that it belongs to him anyway. And without pride, we say, this belongs to you. you know, hmm. we, we give all that we are. Over there. Yeah. Um, if a person just wanted to look at the list, though, yeah, like I said, I'm pretty sure you could probably just do a Google search. There are some particular ones that, that uh, I think people will find will become more a part of their life over time. Hmm. You know, uh, I mentioned something in regards to the Sabbath. I think I think I sent it to you in for the for the newsletter. I might have. I, I don't know. It had something to do with um, 
Well, maybe I didn't. I know it was something I did two weeks ago. A person had wrote to me and had been asking about uh, if they were going to be in public service. Actually, it was two questions in a row that I wound up typing out. And, it, it, you know, the same answer applied to both questions, really, because one of them was going into, um, like, hospice care, uh, you know, studying to become a physician or, or whatnot. And then the other one was uh, talking about becoming either a fireman, or, you know, a firefighter or or uh, a member of the police department or things like that. And they were saying, well, how do I observe the second? That's interesting because Amy asked Phyllis that question a couple of months ago. What if you were a midwife? What do you do yeah. if someone's about to have a baby? It's yeah. lawful to do good on the Sabbath. I can read you what, what it was. If you yeah, want to do that. Yeah, read it. It's, it's, an, interesting, it's an interesting dynamic because... Um, Really, what we're doing there is is something that has to be understood within the uh, within the context of your yourself. You know, you have to realize what's actually going on there, and the the closer that you that we get to understanding that, the better. Because really, um, it's what's in our heart. Mm. You know, there is a Sabbath, and there it is. Man was made, uh, or the Sabbath was made for man. Um, Let's see, I had asked him, let's see. This is how I wrote it out. I said, this is a fantastic question. I'm so encouraged in witnessing your decision to accept Yahuwah's mark of, of Hashabbat. There will never be any doubt whom we serve when this is observed each week as a part of our walk with Yahushua HaMashiach. I said, well, this would appear to be a dilemma, but one thing to accept will ultimately make, ultimately make this a very simple situation to deal with. We those who are in Yahushua, don't have to follow the Torah. We get to. And it's important to understand that this is a privilege. Yahushua's sacrifice made sure that it could never be seen as anything but a choice and a privilege, a reflection of our heart toward him. Our heart is circumcised. We'll not be given these things. We will not be made perfect until he makes us perfect. It's him doing that that's teaching us how to do this. Another way of putting this might be until our obedience is complete. Uh, I know a brother who yearned for the Sabbath for 10 years as a truck driver, that he might be with his family to observe it every week, his, his wife and daughter observe it every week. But, you know, he had started this position prior to understanding the importance of the fourth commandment, all the commandments really, and had made deals based on what he knew at the time. Sound familiar? <laughs> Yeah. After much prayer, uh, a lot of learning and patience, the set up uh, uh, the pa and the patience of the set apart, uh, he has now been released from the obligation, not the job, but the obligation within the job, and enjoys this blessing probably more than most of us know. You know. Mm. Uh, now he has uh, he had options. It's not only a violation of Torah uh, to require. Uh, sorry, it's not only a violation of Torah, but requiring someone to work on the Sabbath or discriminating against them for the observance thereof as a rationale not to hire them for a position is a federal crime in our country. Mm. We do not uh, discriminate for employment based on race, religion, uh, color, or, uh, sex. You know, there, there's, it's, it's just not allowed. And um, he chose to allow Yahuwah to be the one to enforce this right to observe the Sabbath rather than go after some type of a criminal offense with his employer. Mm -hmm. um, but that really wasn't the question. So you want to know if it's okay to continue working on the Sabbath if you're in the healthcare field. Mm -hmm. Well, only Yahuwah can give you this insight as per your individual need to do so for him as a dispensation of his spirit on those who are sick or suffering or those who need help if you're a police officer. You know, after all, this is your role in his ministry we're talking about. And this is probably, let's see, this is very much between you and him. However, I sympathize and I would state that were it me, I would probably not make any arrangement that guaranteed that I would be at the hospital or the healthcare facility or at the precinct or whatever on the Sabbath. 
but rather leave it in a way where I may choose to listen to only what Yahusha is telling me to do. Mm. Uh, I suppose the real question that each one of us will have to answer for ourselves is buried in the conundrum as it's being presented here to us. Am I violating the Sabbath to, to help these people? Mm. I would believe that the best way to avoid confusion would be to make a decision about whether or not you will accept or even expect compensation for having done so. Hmm. Um, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath because the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Hmm. And I hope that that helps some of you who are having this trouble to have something to consider um, and have some specifics to help to uh, shape your determination in the matter. It is between you and Yahuwah, and may all these things be done to the glory of Yahuwah Tzabaoth, for all whom the heavens and the earth are named, Selah. Mm. That's wonderful, brother. Mm. It's interesting to think about because um, most of the people I've had around me the last four or five years, and myself included, we've all sort of got our own shops, so you close it whenever you want. But... Uh, It'd be interesting if you were in a different profession. Um, yeah. And it's a big deal. I mean, you know, there are, I remember one time, and I know that, I know the conundrum. I remember one time I looked, I was on the Sabbath, and I looked out my front door, and I just happened to notice over in the road, somebody pushing their car. They'd run out of gas. And, you know, I feel really bad about telling you what happened. The truth is I didn't help. I was a very mm. new Natsar at the time, and mm. I didn't understand, really, that it's lawful to do good on the Sabbath. And the evil that was there, I think I think the fact that he was out there pushing that car was probably less offensive to Yahuwah than what happened in my heart, because he didn't know it was the Sabbath. Mm. I knew it was the Sabbath, and what I, what I felt, actually, honestly, was I looked at him and I said, if he hadn't been out on the Sabbath, that probably wouldn't have happened. <laughs> <laughs> that rude? Yeah, that's, I didn't that's how it goes, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't go ahead. So I should have. I, I, you know, and I've, I've, uh, I've repented of that kind of thinking. Mm. But I mean, I think right in there, a person might see the, uh, the microcosm of what can happen in our hearts whenever we begin to judge somebody else's walk. Yeah. You know, I, I've gotten to the point where you know. I was talking to a brother earlier today, and I, he'd never heard of this uh, false messiah character that's been around for thousands of years called M-I-T-H-R-A-S, hmm. you know. Um, a very interesting dynamic about the description of the, uh, you know, the exploits and the, and the uh, personage of this mythical person, M-I-T-H-R-A-S, is that it very, very closely resembles the image of the Christian J-E-S-U-S. -S. Funny about that. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's not an accident. The enemy has done a very good job of creating this anti-Messiah personage so that if what is widely accepted can be compared to it, it can, be, it can appear that both are myths. I don't think that there's a rational thinking person inside of, uh, uh, you know... Uh, a collegiate atmosphere of any kind that would ever think that M-I-T-H-R-A-S existed. But when they read about what he was like, they'll be thinking, oh, those Christians, they're idiots. <laughs> you know? But the interesting thing about that is that if you know Yahushua, you truly know that his heart, you understand, he did not come to abolish the Torah, but to fulfill. Mm. You'll recognize the difference between who he actually is and this character, M-I-T-H-R-A-S. You know, Shatan, the first prophecy of Messiah occurs all the way back at the beginning of Bereshit, Genesis. Uh, you know, in the very, I think it's in the second chapter, 2-6 or something, talks about, you know, his uh, 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 his head shall crush your heel, you know, or you shall crush his heel and his head shall, uh, his heel shall crush your head. Um, probably slaying the quotation there. <laughs> At any rate, uh, that was a, that was a, uh, 
That was a prophecy of Messiah. And the enemy knew about Messiah from the very beginning because of that. And he has always been trying to create this messianic figure. And we have endless examples of false messiahs because of it. You know, because if he can if he can seek to discredit something based on that, he will do it. He will do it. You know, mm -hmm. the reality is, is people may start out in the Christian circus. You and I both did. Some people, and I mean, I, I truly believe in trying to reach the, the, the truly lost. Any one of those people may have genuinely accepted Messiah, and they just have yet to open their heart to understand his instructions. Mm -hmm. You know, his name, his instructions. But I'm talking about people who don't even have that. We're we're talking about people who have uh, who have given up and and begun to, uh, you know, adhere to this model of evolution. That's another point right there. I'd like to bring up. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of the theory of evolution? Yeah, it's just a theory. It never got. No, it is. It's, oh, it it's not. A, I thought it never got accredited. The theory, a, a theory, a specific criteria for a theory is that it must be. It must be possible to test it. <laughs> you cannot test evolution in a laboratory. Hmm. Or can you test It is creation? a model. Just like the creation model, you can't test creation in a laboratory either. You can't test it in a laboratory. And the only reason the word theory is applied to evolution is to lend credence to it. But it's not a theory. It's a model. It's one, it's, you know, it's like a little kid sitting around with modeling clay building a scene, you know. Hey, this is what it might look like. Mm. That's all it is. Mm. It, 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 and to call it anything else just gives it, uh, you know, uh, Watch out, you're credence that it showing. doesn't, yeah, it just <laughs> gives <laughs> credence. Mm. Uh, at any rate, you know, people in that situation, those are ones that I would really be trying to reach, uh, you know. But we do try to reach also uh, people within the Christian organizations because in a lot of cases, their hearts already are toward Messiah. They've just been misinformed. Mm. And, and we can figure that out. Uh, you who is weeding out the actor? I mean, you know, he, he does that. And for a lot of people, I remember one time when I was, uh, you know, a teenager and just beginning to... Um, really fall in love with the father. Uh, I, I, was, I was about 19 years old, and I was just really beginning to fall in love with him. And uh, I went to a local circus a couple blocks away from where I was living, and there was a band in there playing, and they were playing, uh, you know, Big Wheel, Keep On Turning, Proud Mary. And I said, do you know what that song's about? Hmm. And this is what happened. I mean, the guy was playing the song, you know, and he was like, Shh. I was like, oh my word, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm getting out of here, no, <laughs> that's not good, you know. Uh, I, I mean, I remember talking to people like at my job the next day and, and saying, you know, yeah, I remember one of them would say, oh yeah, you know, the circus, I, it's a good place to pick up chicks. Yeah. You know, mm. So it's just a social atmosphere. It's it's yeah. really, it's a place to meet women who are, uh, I guess, not as scary or something. Maybe I, I don't know. For <laughs> for most men, not as tainted. <laughs> yeah, as tainted. Once, there you go. Once upon a time, anyway. But yeah, as far as much these days, not necessarily, not necessarily. Mm -hmm. necessarily. But I mean. For someone who really wants to fall in love with the Messiah, we've gotten, you know, my story was just basically about the man in the car pushing his car was just really to, to, to state that, you know, I, I, and I was, as I was describing to that brother earlier, I was saying, you know, I spelled out his name, M-I-T-H-R-E-S, because of the Torah command that we're not to have their names heard from our mouths. And then a few a few uh, moments later, I guess, and I didn't really pick up on when I said it, but he had pronounced it. I'm going to go and look this guy up, and he'd said the name about, oh, oh, I'm sorry, you don't know. I didn't notice, you know, that he had said it. And in a lot of cases, I don't even notice when they use the J-E-S-U-S -S and the, the G-O-D and the Lord and all this stuff, because 
we understand uh, that they are just now. Well, it's their walk. Yeah. Mm. If mm. I said it, I would notice. Mm. You know, I mean, if it ushered forth from my lips, I would be like, whoops. Mm. It, Sorry, it, Father. You know, but but it, we've got to get to a point where we're not walking around like, what are you doing? You know, it's different than judgment. It's called discernment. Whenever I see something and I and the Spirit does call my attention, oh, that that didn't turn out so well. You know what? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna practice that in my life. I'm not gonna practice it that way. You know, we're discerning things. We're saying, I don't know that I like the fruit of that. I don't like the way it works. Mm -hmm. I may be moving too fast for this camera. I bet it's going to be a blur. Right. But, yeah, there's a big difference between doing that and judging the actual person, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, the, whenever I do things like that, I, I didn't really think about it until you started explaining it, but I expect the person to be convicted in their heart before they're even doing what I'm doing. I don't even expect them to spell it out. To me, it's... It's me. It's not them. It's a personal walk. Yeah, it's it is a personal walk, relationship. So, yeah, it is, you know, and each each person has the has the right that Yahuwah gave them to seek Him or to be sought by Him to to live life. You know, we've been given a right to life, and it's not it's not up to me to take your right to live away. That can be taken care of by uh by you in the way that he chooses and i do think i mean we got we have uh guidelines that our country set up political guidelines some of them righteous some of them not but yahushua has told us that as long as it doesn't contradict a law of yahuwah we're supposed to follow through you know if the law the law of the land is where your seat belt hmm. i'll tell you right now for me it's largely a pain in the tuchus but Mm. Where are your seatbelt? I don't mind doing it most of the time, but there's times where I don't really care. Mm. You know, I don't trust that seatbelt. That's part mm. of what we would call a perversion of peace. Mm. It's called security. You ever heard of that? Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting that we have these little quaint perversions of things. Like, you know, there's love, there's lust, mm. there's joy. Mm. Here's one, happiness. <laughs> Everybody's going to go looking for happiness. Mm. No. Because happiness is fleeting. It depends on what's going on at the moment. Mm. Joy mm. does not care what's happening. You know, it, it's there whether you're in good times or bad. Joy is from the Father. Happiness is something the world has contrived, you know. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, mm. And, and then peace. Ooh, peace. I love peace. Shalom. It's great. You know, we talk about peace. You know the dictionary definition of the word peace? It's basically everything's whole. Nothing's broken. And everything's in its place. It's where it goes. Mm. It's, it's where it should be and how it should be. That's peace. You know? Order. Like having everything in order. <laughs> Chaotic. It's not chaotic. It's it's shalom. Mm. It's it's as the Father created. It's as it should be. Mm. That's mm. peace, and we have this feeling that comes from peace. For instance, that's one of the main purposes of us being told all these truths. It's not. I mean, I'm not saying it's the sole purpose, but it is the main purpose. It's not so we can go and beat people over the head with. <laughs> Here some truth for you, hmm. you know. It's for us. He gave us the answer to our question. That gives us peace in our heart. If I ask you, Brother Mark, who is our creator? Is there any doubt in your mind as to what the answer to that question is? No. Nah. That's peace, isn't it? Yeah. Does that give you a sense of peace to know the mm. answer? Yeah. You see how that information works? Mm. It's great. <laughs> yeah. Now, are Wonderful you going to take design, that? Isn't it? Are you going to take that like a baseball bat and go start hitting people with it? No, <laughs> no that's not peace. No, no. that's what it's. That's what the information's for. The goal is love. Mm. The information is to primarily to provide 
peace for the person that they've asked a question and they can have faith in the answer. Mm. This is the answer. Yeah. Uh, and, and I know that or whatever, you know, so they have peace. So what we've substituted for peace is, here it comes, security. <laughs> mm. and, and how much do you pay for security every month? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, security. Mm. Uh, well, peace of you know, mind, security, peace of mind. <laughs> it's the lock on the door. It's the insurance on the car. It's the it's the health insurance. It's a lot of things. And I'm not trying to say that people are bad for doing it, but until we have fully put, and I'm not saying that I don't, you know, I'm not saying that I don't invest somewhat in security. I'm certainly not perfect either, but it would be best for us to recognize. And until our obedience is complete, we'll probably recognize these effects in our lives. The truth is, if we are in total submission to him, then we don't have to worry about anything. We can have peace, we can have love, we can have joy, mm. and we have no need for happiness, lust, or security. Mm. You know? <laughs> That's wonderful. I like that. I've always felt little bits of what you're saying there. I just haven't put it into a package like that, what you're saying. That's really, really, I like that. It's really And that's what they all work. Mm. You know, when mm. you're offered, I don't know, security, mm. it's 97%, yeah. not 100. Peace is all the way. Yeah. It's 100%. She's, mm. she's saying that if we look at... Uh, Lou likes to describe um, uh, Torah observance as trying to hit a mark, like a bullseye. Mm. And it's sort of distance from mm. distance from the center that we're dealing with. Mm. Uh, uh, mm. Maybe looked at it as circumnavigation. You know, a lot of people would think if this is righteousness, that this is evil. But evil doesn't exist Hmm. Okay. It just cuts out your microphone. Go on. Say those last it, few things again. <laughs> I said I said evil does not exist as as 180 degrees of righteousness as far as the way that it's shown to you, you know. Hmm. If you look at it, the way that it's presented is just a five-degree tilt to the right or to the left. It's saying, you For know, all you don't have purposes, to get right there. It, can it be. looks the same. Right, mm. right. It doesn't want you to know the difference. Yeah, just a second. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> they should sing a song or something. He's going to unplug it. <laughs> we'll just unplug that for a little while, eh? <laughs> Looking pretty sharp there, mate. Yeah. Thanks, got, you got, thanks, mate. Got to look sharp for the salon, eh? That's right. <laughs> yeah. Like, got to wear black for the shop. Makes you look it's thin. The <laughs> it's, a, it's the first time I haven't seen that little shirt on you with the, you know, the sashes there and the, and the alligator. What? Yeah. It, alligator. Alligator. Used to, uh, there used to be these, these commercials for uh, Forsters. Yeah. Forster's lagger. There was like I remember all these ones. There was like um like a man and a woman just like arm wrestling, you know, going at it, right? And uh it says how to speak Australian, you know. They're all you know, one the, the woman like just takes the man out and he go he goes, Marriage counselor. <laughs> and then, you know, this beer comes down, boom, beer, Forster's. Australian for beer. You know, there was another one. Uh, oh, yeah, there's this guy standing there, this big guy, and he's, like, trying to catch something, right? And this piano comes down. You know? And you hear him go, oh! And it says, cry, baby. <laughs> beer. Yeah, what, a, what are you? Australian. Cry, baby. <laughs> It's just a piano. <laughs> a cry, baby. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I used to love. It. Have you ever seen any of these things? Uh, not, not for a while now. No. Mm. I wanted to ask uh, you uh, when you're talking about peace and about keeping everything in order. Your uh, 
your four children are, uh, your youngest is now older than my oldest. So mine range from nearly one to seven. Yeah. And your youngest is eight, is she? Yes. Eight, my oldest, my son is eight. Yes. Oh, yeah, eight, yeah. So um, with your children, how do you maintain order? and peace in your home feeding <laughs> so, you, you know sometimes they just come out of nowhere and for no reason at all just to keep you on your toes stop it <laughs> see feedings do you see that she's trying to keep me in line with yeah. feedings yeah. yeah lots of feedings so we're talking feed. about that a lot lately we talk about time i think we need a bit more routine in this area or a bit more order in that were, area usually no to be when honest they were with little, you we did timeouts Hmm. Usually, to be honest with you, the way that I keep them in line is by talking to them until their ears fall off. Yeah. And they, do, they, they don't want to get out of line because if they do, don't get a lecture from that. It, it will take about an hour and a half of their life. <laughs> yeah. You know, and for me, I don't, I don't mind. I'll, I'll find the time. It, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna talk to you. Yeah, no, I'm. Uh, we have varying different levels. Um, uh, you know, a spanking didn't used to exist when we were first married. I was very young. Tina was widowed, and uh, uh, our oldest two children um, that came into our marriage together with her, and um, uh, it was basically once we had, after about a year or two, once we had sort of arrived at, a, at an area with this, mm -hmm. um, we decided that if a person broke a command, you know, one of the 10 commandments, we're talking about lying, stealing, whatever. Uh, and it was blatantly so that that would be what a spanking was for. And I was so young about it. I didn't know how to not be angry about it. So if you ever have a look like this on your face, when you're spanking a child, it's wrong. Hmm. Even if it's right, it's wrong. So for many years, probably five, six years, we took spanking out of the out of the uh, list of tools or out of the toolbox, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but that was just because I had to have. There has to be love in our eyes when we spank our children. They yeah. have to understand that that's not an act of cruelty; it's an act of compassion. Um, and and help them to understand that our children essentially live in a bubble. They don't get many spankings anymore. No, and it's not necessarily just for for breaking a, a you know the covenant. It, it, there are times when it, it seems as though a spanking is warranted, but we also try to get creative, whether having them write lines, um, you know, having to do with uh, the infraction as opposed to what the correct behavior would be. Um, taking away privileges. Taking away privileges is the primary one. Obviously, I'm not going to reward bad behavior. Mm. You know, yeah. we don't with financial gain. <laughs> you know, we don't mm. we don't reward bad behavior with with some type of financial gain or whatnot. Mm. But uh, the uh, the absolute worst punishment in our house is not spanking. Actually, is uh, as though a lot of children would see that as being the harshest. The worst punishment in our house is go to your room. Um, and if a child gets sent to their room in our house, they know they've really messed up. That's, I don't even want to look at you right now. We're too angry to even deal with them. Yeah. Mm. I, I, so you might want to just, you know, pull up for a little while and uh, stay safe. Imagine that with, with regards to our heavenly father, you know, he chastens us every once in a while. He gives us a spanking, but that's not his worst punishment. His worst punishment is you don't get his presence. Yeah. Mm. That, that scares me more than any spanking. And w with the way a child works, in their heart of hearts, they are very insecure people because they're very young. They may not admit it. They may not show it, whatever. But they need their parents. And somewhere in there, they know that if their parents stop giving them stuff, they're not ready to get it for themselves. So if it is basically shown, I'm so angry at you, I, I can't even have you around me right now, you know. Mm. That's that really hits home with our children. They're like, I mean, that that really is hard on them to be sent to their room. Hmm. Um, and we don't lock them in or anything. They come out for meals, not when anybody else is eating, but by themselves. Yeah, that that's hmm. the isolation that a, that a person would feel. 
Um, and that only usually lasts for about 24 hours. It seems no, to do the that's, trick. No, that's in extreme cases. Mm. In extreme cases, it might be an entire day they, they are sent to their room, and then we deal with their issue. Uh, you know, they'll come out and they'll have a meal uh, off time with the family. Like the family will have this meal here and then, you know, and then they'll have a meal like right before or right after it, depending on the timing. Mm. They spend, they get, a, they get time to think about what they did. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and usually that, that seems to have a really good effect as far as helping them to understand, having, helping them to be put into a situation where they really need to recognize just how important family really is. How mm. much, no matter how convenient it is for us to treat each other terribly, how at the end of the day, we need one another. Well, mm. we need you. I, I have to be careful the way that I state things. Mm. But uh, that we lean on one another, that we love one another. I guess that's the point, that we love one another. One of the ways that we show our creator how much we love him is by the way that we treat these people. You know, we the, the way we treat our children. There is not a lot of Torah commands that have to do with how well you're supposed to treat your child. In fact, I can't think of one. Mm -hmm. Yahushua said pretty clearly that it would be a bad idea to uh, suffer, uh, you know, or not to suffer, uh, to... Uh, to teach a child badly or what um to lead them astray to lead them astray but yeah. the, the the uh especially away from him but the torah doesn't make a lot of concessions about how you're supposed to treat your child and in many cases it makes concessions about how the child is supposed to treat the parents hmm. uh but the truth is like in our country, I know I, when I'm talking to you, it's it's interesting. I've got to put that in, into perspective because I'm used to speaking to people in America. But in our country, the country Tina and I live in, we have uh, a guideline that comes from our government that states you must provide for your child these four things. Basic food, basic clothing, basic education, and basic shelter. Hmm. You are required by law to provide those four things. I'm sure it's about the same over here. Most of our laws are the same as yours. Slightly different things, but most of the, we're pretty much following in your footsteps. There are there are children no, there, there are parents that go, I don't know. Well that's part of shelter. Um, I don't know what to do, you know, they'll ask, I don't know what to do. My child is so, I was like, Well what what kind of shoes do they have? You know? What what kind of clothes are they wearing? You know, what, what kind of electronic devices do they have? You know, I very much appreciate the fact that a parent is willing to go above and beyond and share those things with their children. But those are not rights. They're privileges that we've chosen to give them. Yeah. You know, if the child is not behaving, just take it away. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, that's really pretty simple. Oh, but I couldn't do that. Why not? Because yeah. people would. No, they don't. <laughs> No, because you have to provide these four things. So, and anything that you provide beyond that is a reflection of who you are. Yeah. Yeah. That's not because of how great they are. That's one of the things I love about, uh, you know, about really coming to understand the heart of the Father is that he is not doing all of these things. He didn't provide us the to Torah. He did not send his son to be executed on that stake because of how great we are. Mm. He sent those things and he does these things because of how great he is. Mm. That's who he is. He does that because, of, and that more than anything has to show us what his real heart is. Mm. Uh, you know, and the same thing goes with our relationship between us and our children. We're not doing those things because of how great they are. And they may be great. I mean, I know, I love my children. I'm just saying, but that's not the reason. That's just who I am. I, I do those things because I can't see doing it any other way. But I do know that if it's a privilege that we've given and they're not earning that or respecting it, I should say, appreciating it is another good word, um, it's incumbent upon us to share with them reality. And that reality in this world is that if you don't appreciate something, you're fixing to lose it. Mm. 
the minute you stop appreciating your wife, mm. how long is it before you lose her? Mm. If you don't appreciate your customers, mm. are they going to stick around long? No. Oh. No. And, and as a business, as businessmen, we know this. And we take, it, we, we take uh, the time to make a real effort to show these people and to show our father what, that we appreciate what he's given us. Mm. And if we don't, hey, we deserve to lose. Mm. You know, if I give my child a nice brand new set of, you know, Nikes or whatever with the swoosh and just the ones they want and the color and the size, that's great. Which, incidentally, is probably not the best thing if they're actually doing running shoes. Yeah. My dad gave me these shoes. I got to show you something kind of funny. Look at this. Yeah. Look at these shoes. <laughs> Those are five finger shoes. Look at that. I got little toes in my shoes. Oh, fantastic. I didn't see that. They got five. It's a running, it's a running shoe wow. that simulates, you know, barefoot walking. Like a gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> this is her Casey. She gave oh. and kissed hugs. Hey, Hi. yeah. How this are is you? Cole. This is Mark. Mark in Australia. In Australia. Hey, Hi. I don't know if you can see yourself on the camera, but that's where you are. Hi. <laughs> You're the eldest, are you? No, nope. nope. she's the second she's eldest. The, second she's the, the middle in age. Good night. Good night. I think she's the smartest one in the panel. <laughs> oh, I didn't know you were still there. <laughs> she scares me. He's very intelligent. It's very perceptive. Yeah. Anyway, uh, to answer your question, seven and under, it's their privileges. The movies, the candy, the dessert, anything they don't need to survive is what you can take away. Up for grabs. And you can also do timeouts. Timeouts usually work better between like three and six. Mm. And then the littler ones... You know, it just you just gotta play with it. For us, like a sort of a bad job, which half half their age and time. Yeah. If there were six, it'd be three minutes in timeout. If there were eight, there would be four minutes in timeout. And and then worse offenses or worse uh, worse actions would be you know full time. Mm. So six or eight minutes for a six or eight year old. Mm. You get it. Um, we count a lot too. Mm. Oh. Yes. But she counts backwards. I count. If we don't go one, two, three. We go three, two, one. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, because there's a definite ending. When you can count one to three, they just think you can't finish it, so they continue it for you. Right. Four. <laughs> <laughs> you count from three to one, it's going to stop. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It works really well, even on the older ones. Yeah. It's amazing. Because <laughs> we've been uh, trying to make an effort uh, to, um, you know, when they do, you know, come and put your hands on the bed, put your hands on the bed, you know, and they're screaming, and, I don't want to smack, I don't want to smack. No, put your hands on the bed, you know. <laughs> and the little ones are just insane. Put your hands on the bed, you know, and uh, you smack them. Then we try and, like, give them a cuddle afterwards so they see that, you know, it's not. Oh, you know. that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, one time I had to really, this was when I was going through that time of uh, trying to figure out, well, what about the spanking, whatever. And I was like, you know what? I'm too mad. We, we can't be doing this because you can't be red faced and angry. Yeah. You know, it, the child doesn't understand and it. That they happens just a lot too. Violence. Yeah, they just <laughs> see it as violence. Yeah. I, I, so I started, Tina and I started researching to find other things. I remember I came across, I don't know where it came, you know, father put this book in my hand. It was the most amazing insight it was called the one minute scolding yeah and what it did was it went into the psychology of punishment the psychology of the relationship in mammals basically the idea is that you know you have a, a bear cub and you have its mother the only reason that bear cub survives is because that mother does not walk away from it if it left that scene that cub would die mm. but they need one another and you who have put in this put in us this intrinsic need and this yearning for our offspring and for our offspring for us mm. and it's it's very much typified in uh in in the example of uh a baby crying for milk and the mother going to satisfy that hunger mm. 
Whenever the baby starts crying, the baby is anxious and excited. Whenever the baby starts crying, the mother is anxious and excited. It causes uh, the milk to let down, and she's ready now to go feed the baby. There's this huge period of anxiety. And then there's the breath, and then they calm down. The reason that this was being researched was because of foster children. These are children who have been kicked from home to home to home. And the interesting dynamic about the way that that worked was that despite the fact that the, what the child fears most is being kicked out of the house and being left, being abandoned by these people, they will actually begin to behave in such a way to make that happen. Mm. And there's increasing amounts of people who are in foster care or, you know, who are, are providing foster care, who are becoming, you know, uh, very frustrated with that dynamic because they really want to do what's best for the child, but it turns out the child is just more than they can handle. The reason this book was written was for them because they can't go out there and red-faced beat a child with their belt or spank them with their hand or whatever because the child will never respond to that. And in some cases, the reason these children are in foster care is because they've gone through different scenarios of abuse in the first place. That's not going to gain any trust. What this book proposed as a solution to that situation was the one-minute scolding. You bring the child into a private place. It's very important in our home, especially. Privacy is a very important thing. We respect their privacy. We ask them to respect ours. If a person is going to be punished, yes, I know sometimes you can't underestimate the value of a good public execution, but usually we are going to take them into private. If it's going to be a spanking, anything, this is going to be a private matter. You know, we take them in there. And it's important for the parent to be able to express their real feelings. Listen, Sally. Listen, Johnny. I really don't like what you did at all. It makes me very angry that you treated me this way or treated your sibling this way or that you did this thing. And for 30 seconds, the real feelings are there. And then there's a breath. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. But I want you to know how much... And then there's the calming down period. This is the same... Psychologically, this is the same as the anxiety of the, the mother and the child, you know, because the child's screaming, it's hungry, and then the calming down whenever the child's being fed. What we're trying to do is recreate that over and over and over for this child. This mm. anxiety and then the calm that comes after. Mm. And that's actually where the trust is built between parents and children, mm. is in that we can be who we really are. We can share our real feelings with one another, and then we can make it through this the solution. Together. We love you. We don't like how you behave. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Much. Now, the one minute scolding is very instrumental in that particular application for you know foster children. It's not always applicable to your your biological offspring, mm -hmm. but the uh, the psychology is there. If I you had mentioned that after the the uh, the smack, there's a cuddle. Mm. And that would be that part. You guys are actually, without maybe even necessarily understanding the psychology behind it, engaging in that part, sitting them down on your knee and saying, listen, I know that you had to get a spanking. I love you so much. I re and, and sharing that with them and not being afraid, even though we got angry. That's mm. the important part about sharing your real feelings. Mm. And also Just getting about that anger out, having the opportunity to say, look, that was not cool, <laughs> you know. And also talking about how they're going to change their behavior is important as well. Right. You know, what are they going to do to mm. behave better? Not just say, I'll do better next time. Oh, really? Okay. That's great. How? <laughs> mm. with, a, with, a person, with a child in foster care, one minute is about all they can handle. Yeah. That's why the one minute for them. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily hold ourselves to that, but but the 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 philosophy remains applicable. Mm. Mm. That's very interesting. Have you, looked, have you looked at the numbers? At how many views have been on these videos? Uh, the ones just 
Yeah. The out the box ones. Yes. I haven't. Let me have a look now, because I have it linked to a different channel, and I'm not always seeing it. Uh, I was uh, surprised at the numbers. Yeah. Let's have a look. Outside the box, episode one, 110 people. Outside the box, episode two, 46 people. That's not bad. It's only been about a week. That's pretty good. Mm. I was surprised at that. I was like, really? I really <laughs> thought whenever you first said, I remember I sent you that email, for the two people who were going to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was surprised about it. I mean, all for Yahushua's glory, obviously. I don't necessarily want to try. I think it's great. It. That's yeah. awesome. Well, we're trying to sort of connect people globally now so they can just sort of hang, <laughs> hang out. Well, we do the information mm. age, don't we? Mm. Yeah, I was thinking it, it, it would also be interesting for other people to be able to, if we ever got that multiple Skyping or whatever, that would yeah. be an opportunity for people to, to sort of fellowship. Mm. Uh, Across the world, mate. Well, I mean, it'd be up to it'd be up to ten people apparently, but even ten people sounds like it would be a lot. So I don't oh, yeah. know. But that's yeah. a lot of people trying to talk all at the same time. You know what I mean? And if you look at our connection uh, today, it's a bit jumpy and a bit staticky. You think about adding ten other people to the mix, we would just like freeze frame. <laughs> right. Yeah. The, the thing that that is good for is um, what they do on the radio stations. Um, on the Nazarene radio network, they, they do everything through Skype, but it's all it's just audio. So when you start putting video into the mix, your computer's got uh, to your computer's got to match up oh. the voices and keep it keep the audio and video in line all the time. So it's always working. Whereas if you just audio, you know, that's not as huh. much fun, is it? Audio, yeah. <laughs> talking, right? Talking in the dark. Speaking so, of, did you get a haircut? Uh, yeah, I did. So did you? Yeah, it looks, it looks good. Yeah, thanks. I had his hair a couple yeah. days ago. You did? <laughs> I did, yeah. Oh. I was getting pretty gruff. <laughs> Quite it's the free. hairdresser, are you? Uh, her? She, uh, she takes forever. I love it. <laughs> it takes her like 40 minute, 45 minutes to cut my hair, and I'm just ever, loving every minute. <laughs> <laughs> I do okay. Well, I cut his beard too, so. Yeah. If I go to a, if I go to a hairdresser, you know, if I go to a barber, It'll take them 15 minutes, maybe. Yeah. 10, 15 minutes. But, and I don't have all the tools they have either. Yeah. I just have a clippers and a comb, you know, some scissors. I think she does a good job. Yeah. It helps that I like it short. Yeah. <laughs> but, no, I mean, you know, it's not like she just buzzes the top or anything. She actually cuts it. I, I do everybody's hair in the house. It's well, when you're, cutting every, when you're cutting hair, instead of cutting like this, Point cut like that. Point cut. You know, like those. The, you know, like those the, head. You know, like those um, sewing scissors that go like this. Yeah. Yeah. Try and do that. It's called point cutting. We do everything by point. We don't even straight cut anymore. Oh hmm. really? Yeah. Point cutting because then all your layers sit nicely together. Yeah. So oh. on the for the top of his hair there, after you buzz the sides yep. and the back, on the top you just go in there with your scissors and your point hold your, and your point cut. And then, if, and then if it's really thick hair, you slice it as well. Yeah, he's got really thick hair. Yeah. So, tricks of the trade, mate. <laughs> Thanks. Good trick. Good, yeah. good tip. Awesome. Well, that's interesting. The, that's right. interesting about the discipline because, yeah, when you've got uh, five children under seven, some days you do, uh, you question your, uh, well, what on earth are we doing here, you know? Sanity. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> Why then, did we? And again? it's always got to be kept. It's got to we'll be kept. You're so outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be kept a secret because if anybody knew we were really going through this, you know, like they'd be like, "What kind of people would be really going through this?" You know, they all look so like everybody thinks we've got it together, and oh no, what? A, not at all. Not at all. Oh, Once so. they start getting old enough to do things for themselves, let them. Mm. That's a big part of teaching them to be self-sufficient mm. is yeah. letting like you, they want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich your seven-year-old six-year-old can do that mm. even maybe five-year-old that it's a butter knife bread you know they can get butter stuff knife. out of the no fridge. you don't make a butter you don't make a peanut butter and jelly with a knife you make it with a spoon <laughs> who wants to go after jelly with a knife <laughs> 
Okay, so Sorry, we've, got, we've got some I'm issues to iron out, obviously. <laughs> I don't really give her, I don't try to give her that hard a time. What did you say? I, I just was making a joke. Obviously, there's some issues to iron out. <laughs> oh. Knife or spoon? <laughs> Uh, right. These are these are the hard hitting kind of questions we're going to be answering here on Outside the Box. Yeah. Knife or spoon? Knife or spoon for Rock, paper, and scissors. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Mm. No, I I spent a lot of time in kitchens. Uh, that was my my survival when I was you know I guess older than sixteen. Once I got past sixteen. I just, I grew up in the kitchens, you know, and, and local restaurants and stuff like that. So. And he's a very good cook because of it. Mm. So uh, things culinary are, 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 you know, points of contention for me. Uh, not that I would be contentious. I'm just saying, you know, I, mm. I have this way that I like to do it. So sometimes I'll point out, no, don't do that. No, that's not. <laughs> it's just the irony of doing that about a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that I really thought would be good there. I'm the baker. I make the challah and the cakes and not recently. Oh, but the challah? Oh, it's got my low-carb diet in a twist. Ooh, not good. She <laughs> I haven't got been making most, anything lately. She got the most wonderful challah, yes. and then she'll take yeah. it the next day and cut it up, soak it in the eggnog or whatever, make mm. the French toast out of it. Oh, no, no, I can't eat any of it. Challah mm. makes really good French toast. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. We hadn't had that in a while. Yeah. It's very uh not good for us. <laughs> well it's like candy. Yeah. 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 Have it in you know, in moderation. Yeah. Moderation. <laughs> like the moderation. Yeah. yeah moderation's what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> well that's wonderful. I'll uh Amy will really enjoy this episode as well. I'll take her through this. It's interesting that that philosophy, the psychology of discipline, psychology yeah. of um, punishment. Mm. Has this been an hour and forty-five minutes? It's been an hour and fifteen. Mm. Oh, it mm. says hour forty-five over here. Well, wow. all right. Anyways, I was going to play you a song. Go for it. You got time? Yeah. Go for it. I restrung my guitar. Yeah. I don't know which song I'm going to play, so anyways, I, I hope you won't mind if I adjust this a little bit, nice. see my face, <laughs> you know, I don't want to, I don't want to, let's see, all right, let's get this, see now you can just, all you can see is a guitar neck, right? So you're a left-handed player, are you? No. No, it's probably just a mirroring effect. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, that's right on Skype. It's backwards. Hold on a second. Oh, I didn't know that. I can fix that. I just didn't know. Oh, yeah. here. Woo! Did you see what I just did? Oh, that's better. <laughs> that's better. <laughs> there we go. All right. Uh, okay, I know which one I'm going to play. Show, I us, the, show us the one. strumming hand. Show us the strumming hand. No, no strumming. Why do they want to see the neck? Just do it all. Well, then I might as well show my face, but I get really emotional when I play. So. That's good. That's what we want to see. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to. That's how I get to when I play. It's okay. It's Mark. Okay. It's, it's all right, right baby. <laughs> this song uh, is an original. So it's fresh to the world for you guys. It's called Missing a Friend.
tried to be against you. And we've always seen so strong, but somehow we're missing a friend, a friend like you. Shame we have such a bad Skype connection. I got most of it. Did it not come through very well? Uh, not not particularly. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just the quality of the uh, of the Skype. But I think I I might have recorded it too. I don't know. You should. You record I, songs. What? Do you record songs well, on the computer? Just saying, I think I'm recording this call too. So. Yeah. If my yeah. version is better, who knows? Because I've got you coming in clear, and I've got me really clear, too. I don't know. Oh, I don't know how I, I don't know really how I get it to you. I got this webcam mm. because uh, I've been running uh, our sessions on uh, my, my laptop. Yeah. And that was all right. But, but my desktop, you know, didn't have a good camera and microphone. So I went ahead and had Amazon send me this thing. Mm. And it seems to do pretty well. I mean... Yeah. Mm. It looks really good on my end. I don't know how well it's being received, though. I guess that's all based on Skype. Yeah, yeah. Well, the whole conversation today has been kind of just slightly, uh, just slightly jumpy, just a touch. Hmm. Just, just slightly. Out. You're coming in really clear, and then I've got myself a little picture of us down here, and yeah. it's it's really good. So is I don't it, know. Is it recording? Are you recording? I think so. I'm pretty okay. sure. I think I told it to record everything that comes in. I have no idea how I'd send it to you, though, because I would imagine the file is there's really a, big. There's a site called You Send It. Oh, yeah? You Send It, uh, all one word. And uh, 
you can send stuff. That's how Adam and I send stuff straight away to each other. So. Um. Okay. Well, I'll see if I've got a file on the recording. Mm. It won't tell me until I hang up. But mm. if you'll stay yeah. with me on the IM, I'll let you know. Okay. I, I I know that I can go over here and tell it to record on the on the message uh, on the yacht the whatever. But I think my uh, I think my webcam is doing it anyway. I don't know if I'm going to get video on you for that though. So I I just have to look. Okay. Sure. Well, let me know. Lovely chatting with you guys. Me you too, too, brother. Hey, real quick before we get off, I was expecting you were gonna we were gonna talk at eight for me, which would have been eleven for you. Um, ah, we had daylight saving change. Sorry, sorry, mate. So, oh, okay. That's what oh, I forgot was. about that. Um, that's what it must have been because I thought it was gonna be twelve for you. Yeah, but it then was. <laughs> it's eleven for them. Maybe he's waiting until noon, and then yeah. yeah. Okay, so that makes that makes it clear. Noon is still better, though, right? For you, was today's time okay for you? Yeah, I can do it at nine. It's it's ten thirty now, and I mean it's it's time. Okay, to bed. okay, great. Yeah. Well, we'll do that then. Absolutely. Alrighty. Good to see you. Hope you have a good week. Looking you forward too. to meeting Amy next time. Is she gonna yes. come up to the shop, or how are you gonna pull that off? Well, well sometimes I go home, <laughs> so uh -oh. it works out now. Yeah. Well, I don't want you, to, you know, if it's if it's not the right time, we'll leave it in Father's hands. Y'all can always call us when you have a moment or whatever, you know, just you two or whatever. Okay. So. Right. Okay. We'll do that, too. Love Good you, night. brother. Love you, guys. Okay. See you later. <laughs> right. Bye. Shalom. You too.